So now I'll hand over to Dave, who is going to drill down much more specifically to um, our region. And really it's, it's the region across the coastal New South Wales um, dairy regions, um, and in particular address East Coast lows. So Dave, um, over to you. Thanks guys. Uh, so thanks Rich for that introduction. So Rich gave the, um, the high level um, concepts there, I suppose. I'm gonna actually drill into a bit of the specific findings we found from our trials, which were run uh, sort of across the subtropical region, um, Gympie up in the north, down through sort of uh, Kerry and Southern Queensland, Casino in Northern New South Wales, and had a bit to do with a site at Moree as well. So Richard mentioned um, the four R's, so uh, we've got a bit of introduction to that. Uh, what we're looking at, I suppose, under these specific circumstances where we have these sort of large dumps of rain, is first of all knowing, well, you know, what is actually happening to our nitrogen? Um, you know, how much are we actually losing in these systems? Is it important to worry about? And the second important thing is, you know, these are usually occurring, although they can occur at any time of year, they usually do occur when the soil's quite warm. So, you know, in the summertime, in the autumn time, um, and so that mineralization, that release of nitrogen from the organic matter um, in those high temperatures can actually be a very, very, very important um, factor in these, these nitrogen losses. And that's what I'll go through now. So a bit of a, a bit of data about where does our fertilizer actually go? Um, and this is largely soil dependent. So when we put on our urea, we go out and we, we spread our urea at um, whatever rate. Um, and this is actual data from both uh, clay soil, a heavy clay soil at Casino and a duplex sandy topsoil at Camden, um, down near Sydney. And so we actually see um, only a small part of the, of the fertilizer actually ends up in the plant after that first sort of 20 to 30 days. Um, most of the soil, most of the, the fertilizer actually ends up the soil. Uh, so we're looking at 37% 37 goes into the soil, this organic pool in the soil um, at Casino, and that's even higher at, in the duplex soil at, at Camden. So uh, we see we're already losing a little bit. So every cent time we put on a little bit, we actually lose a little bit of nitrogen. There's not much we can do about that. There's a few, few strategies we can talk about later. Um, but most of that soil is actually ending up uh, most of that nitrogen is actually heading up straight, in, straight being immobilized into the organic matter. Um, after three cycles, so that same pulse of nitrogen, but now um, three cycles later, 60 to 80 days or so, um, in the clay soil, most of that is still there. So it's, it's taken onto that organic pool. It's pretty tightly held onto that organic pool. So we've still got 28% of our nitrogen actually being sucked up into organic pool. Over the subsequent three cuts, um, you know, we've actually removed, or there's 60% of that nitrogen has been taken up into the plants. Um, a little bit still, still in the roots and in the, the stylons actually on the surface. So a, a little bit still there. But if we actually look at the, the Camden soil, so the, the sandier soil, we've actually lost a fair chunk of that nitrogen. So our clay soils are much, much better at holding on to that nitrogen, um, which is a good thing. Um, than the and then the sandier soil. So the sandier soils are more likely to lose it just over general irrigation, uh, smaller rainfall events. Um, so this 28%, well, that's great. It's in there. It's basically a bit of money in the bank. But what happens over the, the whole year or when will these sort of East Coast lows come down? So if we look at this now over 12 months, um, we can actually see losses actually cut, account for over 40% of our nitrogen. So they're, you know, it's pretty substantial chunk of um, fertilizer dollars that are going up into the air. Um, the soil still, you know, that, that's still in the bank there, that, that, that nitrogen, but it's, it's um, sort of dominated by the losses. So we're seeing small losses, particularly in the heavier clay soils, small losses every single application, but that still doesn't quite explain how we lose 40%. So how do we go from 12% to 40%? And that's where these East Coast lows come in. Um, so as Rich, Rich mentioned, um, the longer our soils stay saturated and the more saturated they are, our, our nitrogen losses go up. And so this is nitrogen losses from denitrification in this case. And you can see it's almost, well, it's pretty much an exponential increase. So these are kilograms of nitrogen per day. And then once we get completely saturated, we're losing sort of, you know, nine kilograms, 10 kilograms of nitrogen per day. And how much we actually lose is really driven by just how much 
available nitrogen is in the soil that can be lost. Um, so this is from Casino. We actually look at um, our daily nitrogen rate loss over a whole day um, after a rain event. Uh, and we look at the bottom line here, this blue line here is actually water content in the soil. So we have our big rain event. In this case, it was uh, over 120 millimetres we put on. Um, and we see that our N2 losses. So this is the dinitrogen that Rich was mentioning too. It's an inert gas, but it's basically a pretty, pretty important loss pathway. And we see it goes up over sort of four or five kilos a day uh, once our soil becomes saturated. So this is starting to add up in quite substantial quantities of nitrogen. So we're looking at in this particular scenario, and this was in, in uh, spring, uh, we're looking at 22 kilograms of uh, nitrogen over 21 days. Um, and it's really driven by those prolonged periods of water logging. And they're, they're, they're the things we need to watch out for. So just a bit of a, a background into actually what's going on in the soil uh, when these sort of um, systems are happening. So, you know, our normal grazing conditions, you know, we've got a lot of our nitrogen is actually in that organic form. So we're looking at, you know, 28% of our nitrogen um, from our fertilizer, that's where it comes from. A lot of it also comes in through urine and um, dung inputs, but over time, we're basically looking at every time we put on a, lot, a chunk of fertilizer, 28% uh, of it ends up in the organic matter. And so it basically accumulates and some of these uh, soils that have more than 4% 4, 4 carbon, um, you're looking at you know, almost 10 tonnes of nitrogen per hectare. So there's a lot of nitrogen in the soil. Uh, it's all, a lot of it's, the vast majority of it's in the organic form, um, but that's basically our money in the bank. Um, we're now Friesian pig stock, big money bank here. So um, it's really sort of, you're basically you know, putting that on. Um, you're not really getting most use of it all the time. Um, but it's basically there for a, a, um, basically a later opportunity. However, under normal growing conditions, the vast majority of that nitrogen is actually locked up in the organic matter. So it's not really available for plants to access. There's a, a small trickle of it that goes across through into ammonia and that's through this mineralization process. Um, and then that's relatively converted uh, relatively quickly into nitrate um, plants can take up both ammonium nitrate, but because um, uh, ammonium is a bit harder to, for them to access, they actually do prefer nitrate. But under normal con growing conditions, when our soil is you know, moderately moist, but not, not waterlogged, um, most of that nitrate is taken up by plants. And so there's actually very little um, accumulation of ammonium and nitrate in our dairy soils because the plants are just sucking it out as fast as it's produced. However, what happens when we have our uh, big East Coast low event? Um, you know, it comes in, it rains, it's cloudy for you know potentially weeks on end. Um, our soil gets saturated, all the all the macro pores uh, fill up with water. Um, our, our nitrogen is still going across, the mineralization is still going across to ammonium, but now it's sort of sped up a bit because there's lots of microbes can access all that water and they want to chase that carbon, they want to break it down. Uh, for the metabolic processes. So what happens, we have a big flush of ammonium through this um, immunization process. However, there's a bit of a handbrake at this stage where um, this process that converts ammonium to nitrate called nitrification is actually an aerobic process, um, which means that when the soil is waterlogged, it doesn't, doesn't actually go ahead. So, and this is why in like, say rice cultivation, we can go out, we can throw in urea onto flooded soils and we don't immediately lose it all because it converts from a urea to ammonium and then it stays in that ammonium form. So the same thing's happening in our, our waterlogged um, dairy soils. And so we're not actually getting that transfer of ammonium across the nitrate. Um, the nitrate is still sitting there, but there's only one or two, you know, there's not very much nitrate there because the plants are taking it up pretty well. Um, the nitrate that is there, we have these little guys, um, these little buggers called denitrifying bacteria. Um, they'll come along, they're, they're in the soil all the time, they're looking for oxygen because they need that for their processes, but they can't find any oxygen because the water's displaced at all, so they'll grab the oxygen from the nitrate. And they'll basically release um, your nitrate as N2 gas or N2O gas. Um, and they'll basically come along and they'll gobble it all up and it's all gone as gas. So that's, that's fine, okay, we have a rain event, um, you know, a little bit of nitrate 
disappears, but it's not a huge loss. Um, when it's drained again, so the soil then, uh, the rain stops, uh, the water drains down, um, this handbrake of the nitrification process comes off, um, all that ammonium is converted to nitrate, plants can take it up, lots of plant growth, we're happy. So under sort of single large rain events, and we've seen this also with our irrigation, um, we're putting on sort of up to 90 millimetres of irrigation, as long as it's sort of in a single event, because there's not a lot of nitrate occurring in the soil naturally anyway, um, unless you just happen to time your fertiliser quite badly, um, our losses are actually surprisingly low. Uh, when our really big losses occur is when we have these pulsing wet events. So what happens is, you know, we've had one wet event, it's now drained, it's now rain, the rain's come back again. So we've had a, a day or so of uh, lower rain so the water can drain. What that does, it basically um, takes that handbrake off, we put our nitrate back across. So now, you know, even though it's wet again, the handbrake's back on, but we've already got this big pool of nitrate now sitting there. Um, the plants, you know, they're waterlogged roots, they can't really take it up. Um, there's no sun, they're not photosynthesizing, um, but you've got this, all this big flush of nitrate now in the soil. And of course, these little guys come back along and they'll gobble all that up. There's no real constraints on them apart from how much nitrate's in your soil and they'll basically lose it all. So in these big East Coast lows, this constant wetting, drying, wetting, drying, uh, eventually just repeats this process again and again, and eventually to the point where we start to lose our organic nitrogen. Um, and so we're actually starting to deplete this, this money in the bank. Um, and it can get to the point where we actually uh, reduce it quite substantially. Um, and so instead of having this nice uh, reserve of uh, soil nitrogen that you might may need for you know later on or to basically make best use of all that now lovely water you got in your soil um, you basically now depleted that that pool um, and it's now deficient so you're in in deficit and um, your piggy bank falls over so that's basically what happening in these events and that's why we often see in in autumn we basically get this big rundown of of nitrogen um, you know first of all under really good conditions, we've, we've sucked out a lot of that in the plants. But second of all, in these pulsing events, we've actually depleted a lot of that organic nitrogen. And what we need to do then is basically replenish that um, when the conditions are, are safe to do so. So that's the conceptual idea of it all. Um, this is it in, uh, in, in actual, in, um, in reality. So this is what we actually measured from Casino. So this blue line here, that's our total denitrification losses. The orange line at the bottom is nitrous oxide. So nitrous oxide is a potent greenhouse gas, but as you can see, it's part of the, the whole loss process. It's actually quite small. Whereas these, this blue line, that's N2, and you know, you're know you looking at sort of up to six to 10 kilos a day, and it adds up very quickly. Um, so this, this bottom line down here, this black line, that's actually our, our volumetric water content. So that's how much water we got in our soil. Um, all those farmers going out and putting source, sort of moisture probes in there. This is sort of the sort of information we're looking at. And I mentioned before, you know, we've done a few irrigation trials, and this is one here um, where we basically we put on 90 millimeters. We're putting on fair bits of water at once, and we're getting these big responses um, in our soil water. So we're getting above this this dotted line here, which is our our saturation level, and we're getting into those anaerobic conditions where we'd expect to see losses. But because there's not a lot of free nitrate sitting in the soil under normal growing conditions anyway, you know, plants are taking it up as fast as it produce, we don't get large losses. Where we start to see the big losses are when we start to see these pulsing rain events. And so here we've had 200 millimetres over two weeks. Um, the biggest losses which come in this second pulse here um, are actually uh, following a 13 millimetre rainfall event. So it was just enough to top it back up again. Um, there's lots of pulsing, which is allowing that nitrification, um, denitrification process to, to go, uh, uh, accumulate that nitrate in the soil. And that final 13 millimetres was just enough to top it back up and become anaerobic again. And all those goody little um, denitrifying bacteria come and steal it all. So you can see here when we have these prolonged periods of, of wetting combined with pulsing is when we're really in danger of losing our nitrogen and potentially depleting our soil organic nitrogen pool. Um, 
so this nitrogen supply from mineralization is is probably the biggest driver of production over summer um, simply because it's it's such a big pool it is available but you've got to be careful that you don't run out of it um, this blue line here at the, at the top this is basically how much nitrogen is supplied through mineralization you can see once you have these big rain events those microbes start breaking down the organic matter releasing that that um, that nitrate and we have our production goes you know through from mineralization goes through the roof but then it just hits this wall once we start to run out of that um, organic nitrogen pool and different soils have different capacities to supply um, nitrogen from mineralization we mentioned the the duplex soil at camden before so it's got a lower carbon um, on an annual basis, you're, you're looking at potentially 100 kilos compared to almost 200 kilos for a you know, deep black fur of soil at the uh, casino. Um, roughly, you know, if you've got a soil test in front of you, you're looking at around, Rich mentioned 1%, in the tropics is probably a little bit higher, around uh, 2% of um, total soil nitrogen is turned over, uh, mineralized uh, annually. So summarizing this all up, Basically what we're looking at then is when do our plants need fertilizer, when do we want to avoid putting on fertilizer so we don't get the losses. So this graph is basically uh, nitrogen fertilizer demand. So the higher the, the green bar, the more um, hungry the plants are for nitrogen and, and the better response rate you get out of it. So, you know, no surprise, we see our biggest demands during the ryegrass, you know, it's really pumping away that ryegrass. Um, not a lot of these big rainfall events, if it's irrigated, we're sort of topping it up, so there's no real restrictions on growth. As we come in the summer, um, it's not so much that growth is declining, it's just that that mineralization is starting to supply more and more nitrogen. So you actually see our, our nitrogen demand decline um, uh, until almost it's basically you don't see any response at all. However, then our East Coast low comes along, um, pulses a few times, we lose our soil nitrogen, and then we suddenly the plants are hungry again for nitrogen in this sort of um, autumn or you know, following these large rainfall events. And that's basically where we want to look at considering, okay, what are our options there? Um, so a few take home messages, I suppose. Um, typically denitrification losses or you know, nitrogen losses are occurring um, every time it rains, but it's really only the major ones that are sort of agronomically significant occurring after these uh, long rain uh, periods of waterlogging and, and pulsing events. And even if we're putting on quite a lot of irrigation, as long as we're not you know, saturating the soil and exceeding evapotranspiration, um, we don't usually see large irrigation losses here. Uh, sorry, um, nitrification losses. Of course, if you've got not a lot of nitrate in your soil, so if you're irrigating it after a very long period where the plants have stopped growing, then that might be an issue. But as long as the plants are growing, they're usually taking up that nitrate. Um, so we get these large losses when we have repeated rainfall, prolonged rainfall, uh, prolonged water logging, um, particularly uh, after intense rainfall events following long dry periods when plant growth has basically stopped. Um, there might be some um, issues in during the ryegrass establishment, once again, because of low plant uptake, um, the plants just aren't taking up that nitrate and accumulate. So if you have a rainfall event, then you might lose it. And I suppose the main thing is don't fertilize prior to extended wet periods. Um, it's then really a matter of trying to get the nitrogen on, as Rich said, after the, the rainfall, but it's a bit of a fine window between, you know, avoiding those follow up events, which can resaturate your soil and making sure you're getting it on soon enough that you um, don't you know, strand it in the topsoil because there's no water there to, uh, for the plants to access it and take it up. Mineralization during summer events um, can supply most of the nitrogen requirements, but these mineralization pulses uh, also can lead during these East Coast low events can actually lead to high losses of nitrogen and you might need to replenish that um, soil organic nitrogen pool. Um, just finally, just finally stop on this um, this slide, I suppose, just to update some of the lost numbers for this specific region. Um, so legumes are usually minor in this area because we're putting on so much fertilizer and they're not going to be fixing much if you're putting on 300 to 500 kilograms of fertilizer a year. Um, why would they? It's a very energy intensive process and if they get their nitrogen for free, they will. Um, urine deposition. Most of it in the heavier clay soils actually gets straight into the organic matter. So we do lose some losses through urine patches. You know, you get a lot of ammonia losses for a start, 
but a fair bit of it actually goes into the organic matter. We do lose you know, 30 odd kilograms through nitrification. Um, our soil organic matter pool is you know, one of the biggest pools there. You're looking at two, up to nine tonnes in the top 30 centimetres. So there's a lot of nitrogen there and a lot of it floating around um, when these warm, wet pulsing conditions happen, um, which can basically lead to these life losses. Um, volatilization losses under normal conditions, so as long as you're not um, spreading it you know, during a howling westerly, um, it's usually not too bad, and our losses are usually minimal. Um, and there's these denitrification losses that are, are the major ones in these clay soils where we're actually losing a fair chunk of our, our um, nitrogen. So I'll leave it there and I suppose open up to questions for Marguerite.